Welcome to RSO Performance. Uh, today we're going to show a quick breakdown on how to mount a beadlock wheel, the wheels we're using. Uh, Methods 105 20 inch beadlock, it's a true beadlock wheel. Um, the other product we're going to use, you know a lot of guys want to balance tires, we're not into balancing tires and wheels. You take these things off road, you chew up a tire in the rocks, it's out of balance anyway. If it's a trail truck, you're not worried about that. If it's a dual purpose car being on the street like we are, you want it balanced. So what we're going to try rather than a bunch of weights on the wheel uh, is a product by IMI Products and it's called Equal and you just take this bag and drop it in the tire and it balances the wheel. I guess this thing breaks open and releases some stuff in there and it keeps the tire balanced. So you go out wheeling, you chew up your tires, they balance back out when you go on the street. So we're going to try this stuff out on the project and see how we like it. Um, we contacted IMI Products and they say it'll work great. They told us how much we needed to use. And so we're going to give it a shot. So if you're interested in that, check out imiproducts.com and, and they'll be able to hook you up. Tools you need, pretty simple. Uh, we got socket and ratchet. Screwdriver, you'll need this or some kind of pry tool to get the bead set back down in. We put a little tape on a screwdriver to keep from nicking the wheel. Um, torque wrench, we'll torque these wheels down to uh, 20 pounds all the way around. Takes a little while because you got 36 bolts. The one special tool you're going to need, and you can usually pick this up from any tool distributor, Sears, any hardware store usually has these, it's a valve stem installer. And all you do is screw it on the valve stem, pop the valve stem in, but you will need that to get it in. A uh, Sharpie marker to mark your bolts, and some anti-seize. You want to make sure and put a little anti-seize on every one of these bolts to keep them from galling the threads. If they gall the threads, you're done, dead in the water. So you don't want to ruin a $500 wheel by just not having anti-seize. Next thing, most important probably, is soapy water. Um, don't use anything that can stay in there like grease, oil, WD-40. You don't want anything like that that'll keep the wheel slippery. The soapy water goes on the wheel. Once you're done, it dries up, dries up real quick, especially on a day like today when it's hot, and then you don't have any, any issues. Plus, anything you get on your wheel washes off. So what we're going to do is soap the wheel up. We're going to jump up and down on that tire and get it on, and then get this thing torqued up. we got the wheel up we just use a five gallon bucket we put a little padding on there keep help protect the wheel so one thing you want to take care to do is you want to make sure that this bead goes down around the wheel all the way around this can sometimes fight you especially on these big 41s but you want to make sure that none of that tire is up on the top here sometimes extra pair of hands helps for this part but Make sure you get this on nice and true. Um, what I usually do is I'll get four bolts that are about a half inch longer than what I'm using, and I'll put those on opposing corners just so that I can help keep the, the wheel true as I'm walking it down. What I do is just start running these down just till they hit and draw the beadlock down just a smidge and then you'll be able to start the smaller ones. Alright, so what we do is we've got these set up square. They're 90 degrees from each other both directions. So what I do is just, you know, kind of mark where we're going to start and stop. That way there we know which ones are the ones that are coming back out. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put these in opposing each other. So again, a little bit of anti-seize. We're going to go the first one right here. Get it started, give it a little snug. Just like that. The next one, we're going to go kitty corner 
to the opposite side. And we're going to do that, and we're going to come here, and we're going to go opposite side and go all the way around the wheel. All right, so now we've got them all in. We can go ahead and take out our four long ones, and we'll put the right size ones in. Be sure and mark these four long ones again so you know where you're starting and stopping when you start torquing the wheel. All right, so now we got them all in. Now we're just going to go and start walking these down, and you'll be able to see it comes down. You can, if you're uncomfortable with it, you can grab the torque wrench and torque them, you know, each time, but we've done enough of these that we just kind of walk them down a little bit, give them a couple cranks. And you'll see that as you start snugging them up, the ones behind it will get tired. All right, so now we got all that done. Now we can break out the torque wrench and we do the same exact thing and just torque them down. Make sure you keep your fingers and toes out from underneath the back of this thing when the bead sets. How many pounds are we putting on this bad boy? Just till the bead pops. You'll hear it. Okay. Because right now we're setting the bead on the back side of the wheel. We got it locked up here. We got to set the back side. And she's getting ready to go. She's about 25 pounds. Oh. So now we'll run about 25 pounds area, and that's about all we need for these for now until we get them on the car and see where they're at. So there you go, method 105 bead lock on an Interco IROC 41 inch swamper.